Alright, let's go get this Maghar quest turned in and see exactly what this leads into. Curious if this is going to be just an ending little breadcrumb or if it's going to open into more quest. It means very much to us that you come to the aid, uh, come to our aid in this time of need. We'll not easily forget you, nor he who sent you. You have our thanks. Uh, okay, good. We will take the plate. I think maybe we can take the plate here. Oh, that's intellect. We don't want the plate here. Uh, once again, we don't really have any good rewards. We will take the plate to vendor it. And that is it. I see an exclamation on the minimap. But I'm not seeing it. Oh, it's to our left. Look at the screen, Robert, not the minimap. Earthcaller Raiga. It is good that you've offered to aid us. Our grunts have fallen sick from drinking contaminated water, and I'm missing an ingredient to produce a healing salve. I'm in need of a rare mushroom called Dry Cap. Our foremost orders are to keep our location secret and not risk being spotted while looking for it, or would I go or I would go myself. The only place in Hellfire Peninsula where Dry Cap grows is a cave at the Great Fissure south of here. Be extremely careful if you choose to seek it. Okay. Great. I'm glad we at least get to do something to help them out. Now, when they're saying that their peons are sick, are they talking about, like, being sick with the red pox that afflicts the Maghar? Or are they just talking about, like, some random illness that has nothing at all to do with that? Uh, we could actually make this a little bit quicker. And I don't really see why not. And we can just hearth. Yeah, sorry for the little bit of a weird intro to this one. I uh, just have a little bit of time and I, I wanted to carve this quest out and do this, get this done so I could see if we're going to be going into Zanger Marsh because I wanted to kind of go get the flight points. But if we were going to be spending more time here, I didn't want to really prioritize that. So I just wanted to jump on and use a little bit of free time to see if I can get this quest uh, complete, and uh, if so, we'll be ready just to go into Zenger Marsh, uh, which would be good. I've been really excited to do that. Now, I'm not really seeing a way up, uh, unfortunately, here. This is probably not going to get me anywhere, but maybe killed. Uh, okay, maybe over here? Yeah, I, I'm really having a hard time figuring out how in the world I'm supposed to get here. I'm assuming it's up on this plateau and that it's not below. Actually, now I'm kind of worried about maybe it's below. Yeah, either way, I don't. I see no way we're getting up this at all. Uh, really, at any point. It looks like we kind of could, but we can't. And uh, same thing over here, kind of. Alright, we need to actually maybe kill this guy. Think about that. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Uh, we are running around a little bit faster now thanks to our epic riding skill. So, what do we do about this? Let's scout down here one more time. And just make sure that we're not missing anything super obvious on the lower part of the elevation. And then we'll check the other side of the plateau for possibly a way up. There could easily just be a cave entrance, like right here around the corner. And uh, maybe it's as simple as that. Yeah, this is the Great Fissure, so maybe I just like way overthought that one. I did. I did way overthink it. For some reason, because of the facing of the cave, which always throws me off, I always think the entrance is where the facing is, but that's like the only way caves look. All caves are the same, regardless of whether their entrance is to the north or to the south, east or west. Uh, but it always throws me off. I always look for the entrance where the entrance is pointed. And uh, yeah, that really got me today. I'm sure all of you guys knew that it was in this cave, which is the same one that we fought the uh, guy for the wanted poster. Uh, yep, here we go. That was simple enough. Now I guess we just have to take this back. 
I'm assuming if we were going to be doing a lot of quests for these guys, they probably would have given us more than one at a time to lead. So I'm thinking maybe this is part of a small chain or maybe even a one-off, but we'll see. Kind of disappointed that we didn't really have to do any fighting for it. Am I going to be able to get up somewhere over here? Probably not. Let's see. Uh, maybe. Yeah, there we go. It's kind of nice to move a little bit faster. Um, I guess I haven't been using it enough to really know yet if it feels a lot faster. And it wasn't as expensive as we thought it was going to be. I was seeing listings on Wowhead like it was going to be a thousand gold. Uh, we spent like five, 500 on the training and then what, 90 or 80 on the actual mount. So we got the whole package for somewhere around like 650. And we still have uh, almost 200 gold left, which is going to start going towards our flying at level 70. We might get it. I think later on we start to get quite a bit of gold from like quest rewards and selling the junk that we get from quests. I don't know if it's going to be 800 golds worth of junk that we sell, but it could be. It could be. Uh, I guess I could have like, you know, went the right way a long time ago. And so yeah, I guess the verdict is that it, it feels a lot faster. It feels so fast that Robert can't keep track of where he's at. So, yeah, there's that. Did you obtain the mushroom I need? We did. Gorkon said good things about you. They're all turning out to be true. Thanks for your help. Administering the salve. I prepared a simple salve that should restore our grunt's strength with the her herbs you brought. Yes, the herbs. Take it and administer it to any debilitated grunts you see in the vicinity. Return to me when you're done. Administer the healing salve to 10 debilitated Maghar grunts nearby. Alright, it's not a kill quest, which is something you'd think you would do for some orcs. Uh, are you guys? No, not you? Debilitated grunts. Okay, so these guys... Here's a debilitated grunt. And they put their armor back on and they stand up. That's pretty cool. Are the debilitated grunts going to be like just hanging out by buildings and stuff mainly? Are they going to be inside buildings? No. This is really cool and I have definitely never done this before. I would, I feel like I would have a recollection of running around trying to find these guys. I have vague memories of most of the quests that we've done. Uh, and when I don't, I usually call it out. But this one, I, I can't say that I've ever done this. Did we get you already? We did. It does have a little bit of a cooldown. 10 second cooldown, that's not too bad. This guy looks like well and debilitated, but he's not. He's just like, I guess he's just taking a little nap. I wonder if, do they change or do they spawn new ones in? Like, how does, how is the, this handled by the game? Are there just enough? Are there exactly 10 of these guys is kind of what I'm wondering. Is it more, is it like a find and seek? Or is it like they're going to spawn in random places and they're going to spawn more than 10? I'm always curious about quests like this, that uh, have to deal with interacting with NPCs that have been put into the world that aren't enemies. How things like respawn rates work and stuff like that. Uh, two of these guys are back to back, that's good. This is going to be eight, there's nine and ten over here. So yeah, I feel like there were exactly the number that we needed. It's hard to really track that, but 
I'd be interested to know. Alright, let's go turn this in and uh, see what comes of it. May the spirits bless you, the Maghar are in your debt. Is that it? Alright, uh, let's see. Anything we could use? Nope, not really. Let's take the staff to sell it. And surprisingly, that's it. That's a weird place for the quest line to kind of end, but I did suspect it might do this. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, we'll see them again once we are in Nagrand. Uh, I think for now, all that's left to do is to follow our breadcrumbs as they lead us into Zangermarsh. Uh, do I want a hearth? I could hearth now at this point. We could. But I think we're just going to run it. Yeah, we had planned to go into Zangermarsh at level 62 and a half, and we exceeded that, so that makes me exceedingly happy. Let's go this way. Seems like a better route. Ouch, that was quite a bit of fall damage. I don't want to do a Slave Pens run pretty soon, but I think I want to wait until we get some of the quests. Uh, then again, is there going to be anything in Slave Pens for us? Cloth, mail, mail, dagger, spell sword. Uh, so not at all off the first boss. We could really use this cloak. 271 armor. 22 stamina, 16 defense rating. And then the last boss. Uh, we could use the chess piece. The one we have is not bad. But with the sockets, maybe we can do something with that. And that's it, so only two pieces of potential loot for us there. Uh, so this guy has a path, it seems like. I wonder if I'm going to miss him by not being on the road. Hmm. It's probably not the biggest problem, but we, if we don't find him, it's probably just a little breadcrumb that's going to be worth a tiny bit of experience, but... Uh, we'll keep our eyes open. We might have to run back here uh, a couple of times. We'll see. But for now, I think we're just going to press on. We have some breadcrumbs taking us to Scenarian Outpost here. As well as up to the actual camp where the flight point is. Today is Monday the 11th as I am recording this and there's been a lot of uh, speculation and thought on the internet that the Dragonflight Alpha is going to begin sometime this week. And I wouldn't be surprised if we hear news or happenings in the Wrath Classic world either. That would probably come in the same week or maybe the next week. Uh, okay, let's start picking stuff up here. Uh, Plants of Zangermarsh. The lakes of Zangermarsh are slowly being drained of their water. We don't quite know why, but we do know that many plant species are in danger of becoming extinct. 
As the expedition's cataloger, it's my job to track and identify these plants so that we can better understand what's happening to them. I'd like you to help bring me unidentified plant parts. The Umbraffin Tribe. The Naga are terrible, yes, but even more terrible are the traitor tribes of broken and lost ones that help them. Worst of all are the lost ones of the Umbraffin Tribe. They use dark magic to trap and enslave others. They're especially cruel to escaped slaves and would slit my throat if I left the refuge for even a day. Travel to Umbraffin Village south of here and kill them and their leader, Kataru. He's like, they'd kill me, so why don't you just go kill a bunch of them? No, why don't you just stay here and stay safe? Why do we have to go do your murder for you? Uh, because it's World of Warcraft, Robert. It's not World of Peaceful Handholding. Leader of the Dark Crest, bounty hereby declared by the Cenarian Expedition on Raja Haghazed, leader of the Dark Crest Naga. This suggests two players, but the rewards are strictly solo player rewards. Uh, we'll probably try to take that on our own. And the leader of the Bloodscale, Rajas Fiash, leader of the Bloodscale Naga, the Naga Sorceress, was last sighted at Serpent Lake. Uh, same thing here, nothing that's uh, really any good. Also recommending two players, so I don't know if that means they're going to be an elite, or if it just means that they're going to be in a, a big pack of guys. Could be either. Is there actually a quest up here? Not on this level, let's see if we can go up a little bit more. I'm actually surprised that we're able to be mounted in here. I'm going to dismount because that's going to make life a lot easier. There we go. Uh, he has a warm welcome. While the druids of the expedition have made themselves busy studying plants and researching the lakes, I've made it my business to deal with the hostiles in the area. Ever since we set foot in Zengermarsh, the Naga have launched lethal attacks against us without warning. We've done our best to keep them at bay, but our resources are limited. I want you to go to the various Naga strongholds in Zangermarsh and show them that we're not to be crossed. Bring me their claws as proof of your victories. And we'll just jump down. Ooh, that was a little bit higher than I expected. I'm digging the music here. Very cool. Uh, the Dying Balance. Have you observed the surroundings closely? This is an ailing landscape, struggling to keep itself in balance and losing the fight. If you know where to look, you can see the symptoms. Members of some species rapidly outgrow their peers and become more aggressive. A good example of this uncontrolled growth is the Marsh Strecker Boglash. If you want to see it yourself, look no further than the waterways south of the refuge. It's another two-person kill quest. That's really strange. We're definitely going to be trying those on our own. Welcome to the Snarian Refuge. I hope you've come to aid us in our mission. We've much work ahead of us. Disturbance at Umbraffin Lake. We came to Outland expecting to find small pockets of life. What we discovered in Zangermarsh was a lush environment with a thriving ecosystem. Our initial assessment of the area was deceiving, however. The water levels at the lakes and marshes have constantly been going down ever since we started taking measurements. The impact this could have on the local animal and plant life is disastrous. Go to Umbraffin Lake, southwest of here, and look for clues related to this water depletion. Okay, yeah, that's like already a lot of stuff. I think we want to come up the road, though, and grab the stuff there as well, and kind of tackle it all at once. That would be, that would be the smart thing to do, so let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, Swamp Rat Post. What a name. Let's turn in our breadcrumb first. Wow, he has a lot of quests. 
Uh, report to Shadowhunter Dinaj. Shadowhunter Dinaj will no doubt expect to receive a report about my progress in establishing our outpost. I've prepared a short summary of what we've accomplished here already, but with the loss of Scout Joba, I can't spare a runner to take the report. Can do that. Thick Hydra Scales. Uh, we want to bring him 12 Thick Hydra Scales. And news from Zengermar. Shadowhunter Dijal isn't the only one expecting a report from me. Mokasa at Stonebreaker Hold and Terakar is eager to hear of our progress, especially since most of her messengers travel through here. She asked me to send word once Swamp Rat Post was complete. If you wouldn't mind delivering the news, I'd be very grateful. We may be up and running, but there's still much to be done. So that's our Terakar breadcrumb. Won't be needing that for a while. Menacing Marshfang. Sometimes I wish Dajal had sent a shaman with us, or at least given us a totem to keep the Marshfang rippers at bay. The whole place is crawling with the pest. It's not just- it's just not right. Shouldn't something be eating these despicable things? We've all been taking turns playing exterminator, but you showed up at the right time. Congratulations! Now get out there and mop up some Marshfangs. Uh, we want to bring her eight diaphanous wings. For that one. Oops. And then no more mushrooms. Gather eight eel fillets from a broth and eels. And we will grab the flight points. So the funny thing is, there's no inn here, but there's a flight point. And down at the Cenarian Refuge, there's an inn but no flight point, so we get a flight point in one place and an inn at the other place. The good thing is they're really, really close, so. Uh, the Horde kind of has a benefit over that. I believe the the Alliance Town is further up the road over here, uh, so it's a little bit farther from the Cenarian Refuge. Once again, Horde players kind of have the better end of the deal as far as that goes. Uh, looking at the map, I mean, we have stuff to do all over the place. I'm probably going to try to focus on the rippers. We'll come down to the lake. We'll get the hydra scales and the eel fillets. Oh, hi there. I don't really need to fight you, but if you insist. Can't skin it. I bet we can skin the Marshfang Rippers. Yes, we can. The interesting thing is that Victory Rush doesn't cost any Rage. So that's nice, that's a pretty good opener. If you can get to the next enemy in time before the buff wears off. Within 20 seconds of a kill, so... I feel like there are going to be some quests where we get to use this a lot, and there might be quests uh, kind of like this one, how we this could run out before we get to the next kill. Yeah, see, we didn't get to utilize it there. It's a little bit longer than 20 seconds.
I've kind of been enjoying having the floating health bars on. I've had them on for a few episodes now while we've been questing, and yeah, it's it's good. It's kind of working for me. I, I like not having to look down here to check the health. You can just watch the character animations, look at the enemy, and you can see the health progress. And uh, I haven't heard anybody complaining about it, so I just kind of assume that you guys either don't mind, don't have an opinion, or that you enjoy it as well. So I, I think we're going to keep doing it like that. Uh, we're getting really close to the Alliance base, and I don't really know if that's a great idea. I literally charged this guy just so I could use the Victory Rush cooldown, and we lost it as soon as I got within range to do the attack. That was unfortunate, but then again, we are kind of uh, ripping things apart here. Very easy easily, and uh... Oh, we're getting unidentified plant parts from these guys. Okay, so it is worth it to take them out when we see them. Yeah, see, there's the elevator that would take you up to the Alliance Town. I guess they don't have any NPCs down here, so we're not really at risk. Well, that's all the Marshfang Rippers we need for the kill quest. Let's come down to the south here. We'll start working on the diaphanous wings, the thick hydro scales, the eel fillets. Lots of stuff to do at the big lake in the middle, Umbrafen Lake. Uh, and then we have the Naga kill quest, I believe. There should be Naga like all over the place for us to get the claws from. Uh, the diaphanous wings are going to come from the um, Umberglow Stingers. And we can't skin these guys, which is unfortunate, but understandable. I'm gonna do my best not to complain about how much I dislike underwater combat during all of this, and I'm just gonna try to have a decent time.
Well, he dodged and parried our first two attacks and a third dodge, so we have not hit this guy yet. There we go. Oh boy, what is this? Oh, this allows us to breathe underwater. That would have been a really cool thing. At least I realized that now, and uh, not after complaining about how we had to go underwater. Okay, that actually that actually makes stuff a lot easier, doesn't it? If we can just hang out down here, then it's not so bad. However, these guys aren't really dropping their item, are they? I'd love to see just one item drop, you know, for like perfect concept. I feel like I'm having deja vu back to when we did this on the Human Priest. I'm pretty sure it was the same exact quest. And I'm pretty sure it felt like it had the same exact drop rate. I think on the Human Priest though, I didn't realize I had a breathing potion, so... That probably made it a lot more annoying than it had to be. Hey, there's an item. That makes me happy. They do exist. I keep going for shield bash, and I don't have a shield. And it feels really bad to me to not be able to stop the constant poison spit that he's putting on us, because similar to magic damage, poison kind of kicks our ass. And uh, yeah, it ticks for a lot. I'm going to have to come over here, and we're going to have to do a couple of things. We're going to eat back to full health, and then we're going to make some bandages. And uh, while we're doing that, I am going to drink some coffee. That, we'll just make the rest of them. I mean, it's good. We're maxed out on first aid skill, which feels pretty good. I love having all these things to do and having all these things to fight kind of in like a small area. 
gives you like some enemy variety. We can be on land for a minute, we can go back in the water. It's just nice to have choices. I've heard people say like Outland is a little bit grindy, like just the amount of fighting you have to do feels like a little bit grindy. And you're not wrong, but the thing about it is, the important thing is, you have to just be on a class that you love. And if you're not playing a class that you love, doing quests like this where you have to fight all of this stuff and you have to fight so much of it to complete the quest, you're going to be really miserable. I mean, I know that to be true because I was not having a good time on the, on the Human Priest. And every quest I took felt kind of like a horrible grind. And it was because I was not enjoying pressing the buttons of my class. You really have to love to press those buttons. That's what the game is basically about at this level. And you'll find that when you're on a class that you really like and you really resonate with, you're not bothered by having to go fight 20 or 30 guys. You also have to be in a mindset where... I mean, you don't have to be. What helps is when you're not in a mindset where you're rushing to get to endgame. And I feel like WoW players fall into this trap a lot more than people in any other game. It could just be an MMO thing, but I feel like WoW kind of started it. Where people kind of see the leveling as something they need to get through to get to the good stuff. You can't really treat the game that way and expect to have a good time. There is good stuff once you've completed the level leveling journey. There really is. There's all kinds of fun stuff we can do. I'm looking forward to doing Heroic 5 Men's, if nothing else. I, I find Heroic 5 Men content really fun. I enjoy doing it with Pugs because uh, Pugs, even though they can go horribly sideways, it's always a really dynamic and interesting experience. So even though I'm looking forward to that, I'm definitely not rushing to get there. The only impetus I feel to focus on this character right now is that I would like to get as many levels in as we can before we get the experience buff. Uh, so that's really my reason for focusing this character and uh, just spending a lot of time on it. It's because A, I'm having a lot of fun on the class, I love pressing the buttons, and uh, I would like to see as much of Outland as possible pre-experience buff. But yeah, if you're playing the game, find a class you love, take your time, uh, enjoy the world, enjoy the music, enjoy the ambience. And, uh, you know, I just use, I use it as a way to just relax. Uh, to me, running around and fighting 50 guys on my warrior is something that's cathartic, it's, it's soothing. Obviously there are always going to be frustrating quests and frustrating moments. Uh, we've definitely experienced our share of those, but... It does come down to finding something you enjoy and then getting yourself in the right frame of mind to truly enjoy it. Not bad, not bad. Uh, that got us pretty low on health, but we managed it okay.
I find that my depth perception is really bad underwater in this game. Like, I have a hard time telling how far away enemies are. That's why you'll see me basically, like, pounding my charge key, thinking that, hey, I should be able to charge right about now, but in reality, I need to get a little closer first. We'll fight this guy and then we're gonna heal up. We'll also go ahead and reapply some of our potions here, and uh, maybe eat some more buff food. Get that free stamina boost. We got a green ring there. What was that about? 11 agility, 16 stam, and 22 attack power? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I wonder if that's going to be better than the epic level 53. I could go into the character sheet. I'd have to, like, compare the character sheet. We'll do that after we take care of this guy. Okay, so, right now we're at 657 top end damage and 1294 power with an 1805 crit chance. So, 657, 1294, 657, 1296 with a slightly higher crit chance. I feel like it's a little bit better, and I feel like I'm gonna wear it. It's very marginal, but green is the new purple in this case. Yeah, like, looking at all three of these guys, it's hard for my brain to decide which one is closest. It 
turned out to be this one, but for a minute I thought it was the one over here, which is now obviously quite further away than any of the others. Uh, I think we aggroed this guy. Yes, we did. Uh, or maybe we didn't. Okay, we did. <laughs> The good thing is we're getting unidentified plant parts from these guys as well as the eel fillets. We're probably going to complete the Unidentified Plant Parts quest from killing these guys before we finish their specific quest. Which is kind of funny. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> One quest down. They sure like to dodge on the victory rush. I'm coming up here to get a look around to see where we might find some more hydras. I actually don't see any right now. Uh, where are we at? Yeah, we're just kind of in the middle of the lake. Maybe we wouldn't see them from here. Maybe we'd have to get closer to the shoreline for them to even show up. Alright, one more eel fillet though and we can uh, think about getting out of the water here. Well, we got our last item and we got another green. These are the Nether Stalker Leggards of Healing. Plus 88 healing. Pretty straightforward piece. Okay, that's all the eels we need. Let's start hunting down some more of the Hydra. We currently have 7 out of 12, which, uh, seeing as how I haven't been paying attention to that progress at all, is pretty good.
I guess we are going to start uh, wanting to collect some more nether weaves soon. I hope we go up against some humanoids. I wonder if the Naga have a chance to drop the nether weave. They probably do. I think we'll fight some broken as well, and maybe they'll drop some. It's not very expensive on the auction house. I think we can get a stack of it for like two or three gold if we absolutely need to. Zangermarsh does not seem as busy as Hellfire was, uh, but it could just be an illusion created by like the limited lines of sight. There could be players, you know, that we're just not seeing as often, because it, there are more than 50 people here right now, which is quite a bit. Looking for one more item from the Hydras. I do need to move my frames around a little bit. It's been annoying me for a while that I, I can't quite see the cast bar. So let's bring that up here a bit. That does not look exactly straight. Uh, but it's pretty good. Yeah, it'll do for now. Oh, uh, let's see. Did we loot? We did loot. Uh, we didn't loot, and we didn't skin. So yeah, we definitely want to do that. Look at that. Quest completed because we looted. Who would have thought? Alright, that leaves us with uh, Diaphanous Wings, which were... It looks like we have kind of a better shot up here, but we do have some down to the south. And also down to the south, we have uh, the Seers, Oracles, and Witch Doctors we need to take on. Um, hmm. We, we could head down there and we could see what the population of uh, the bugs actually is. We can fight whatever we find. And yeah, I guess I, would, I wouldn't I mind just start starting to carve into those Umbrathan guys. That's a pretty big kill quest and uh, should be enjoyable. Cannot use stealth or invisibility. Chance to dodge is reduced by 20. Agility is reduced by 10%. That's a pretty painful thing to get hit with if you are a rogue. If we're a warrior, it's 
It's not great, you know, losing agility is not great, but it's not a, a deal breaker. Looks like we do have some competition for these things out here. Well, we have one item. I was going to say they don't really want to drop their item, but hey, at least we have one. It's better than zero. Uh, it says Boglosh can spawn over here. Oh, oh, there he is. Do we want to try to take him on? Uh, if we are going to try to take him on, it's a good time to do it because we have uh, Retaliation up. What I don't want is I, I don't want to pull him while we're fighting this guy. That's going to get us killed. Yeah, I'd like to try to take this guy on. I'm going to eat. That's going to save the bandage cooldown. We have potions up if we need them. I could go sword and board for this, but I feel like sticking with the two-hander is going to be fine. It's going to be what it is either way. We're either going to find out quickly that we have a chance, or we're going to barely do any damage to him and he's going to be crushing us. So it's going to be... It's going to be pretty obvious pretty quickly. My initial reaction is hopeful. Yeah. I'm hopeful. We can with some tricks we can do this. Unless he has some big tricks up his sleeve. Uh I, I think we can actually do this. The first thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try the fear bandage. That did not work. Okay. Uh that did not work at all, so. That's good. I think he was just immune to the fear. I'm gonna try to do this without using a potion. And yeah, we did it. Pretty happy about that. Let's go ahead and eat. So that's one elite down. That was one of the ones that uh, came from the wanted poster, I think, that told us we needed two people. So if they're all like that, we're going to be able to take out these guys without a problem. Uh, all on our own, probably. If there are other players around, we'll invite them, but... If it's somebody like that, then we can just take it out on our own. We don't have to bother wasting our time looking for a group. Ah, there is a seer under the bridge here. Pretty sneaky. Pretty sneaky. I am probably going to wish that I had a, a sword and board for these guys, right? Because they're going to... Maybe they're even going to have heals. If they start healing, oh, we're going to pull out the shield.
that's a heal. Yeah, that's a heal. With Mortal Strike on him, though, he, he healed for basically nothing. It was basically nothing. Yeah, I think we're fine. I think we're fine, even if they're gonna heal, because Mortal Strike is pretty much uh, decimating the amount of their heal, so that it's not even effectual to do it. Yeah, we can stay with the two-hander, I think. Ah, uh, the music just came to a jarring and sudden halt. Oh, these guys are dropping rune cloth, which is not not cool. <laughs> we don't need rune cloth, and uh, I don't really want any rune cloth. I would like to get some nether weave. Nice entangling roots triggered our second wind. I love it. And we have cleaned this little area out completely. How long is this going to go on for? Yeah, a long time. Strength and stamina reduced by 18 and it shrunk our size down. However we got that, I would like to, uh, I'd like to stop that from happening, so maybe I look to interrupt that if we see it next time. There is a quest here, we can go check it out. I have a feeling it might be an escort quest. If it is, we're gonna wait on it. Yeah, it's probably an escort quest, if I had to guess, and someone else is probably doing it right now, which is why the guy just is not here. With that being the case, um, I'm kind of okay if we miss an escort quest. It's it's not really a big deal. If, if we can do it, great. If we miss it, uh, I'm not going to shed any tears over it. We'll see if it shows back up while we're here. Uh, can we go further to the south? Yes, we can. Okay. We need to find a lot of witch doctors. We also need to find Kataru. Haven't seen him yet, so I think that maybe he's going to be way down here. Yeah, he's going to be way down here to the south. Probably in the big building. That seems like where like a head honcho might hang out. Seems pretty good. Thankfully, they are dropping some nether weaves, so I do appreciate that. Ah, uh, we 
We couldn't charge there. I don't think we had line of sight, and then we were too close. Not great. Oh, uh, the Tremor Totem, I just... I can't have that happening. There we go. I don't think that guy got to even take an action. I'm pretty sure we uh, deleted him before he could do anything. Now there's the totem again. I didn't get it in time. And there's the freaking two minute curse. Yeah, I saw it coming. Without having shield bash up, it's it's hard for me to hit this reactively. Okay, well that's unfortunate, but we'll be fine. All the witch doctors seem to be hanging out back here in this building. And there is Kataru. Oh, there's the totem. Got it. Okay. Chain lightning. Kind of a waste of an AoE. Got a Skettis Curved Blade of Agility. It looks pretty cool. Nice pink sword, I like it. We don't need oracles anymore, we need one seer and a handful of witch doctors. And the witch doctors I'd only really seen back here in this building, I don't think we came across them anywhere else. Uh, what we could do is we can come back up to the north a little ways and see if maybe our escort quest guy is there. I'm still not going to take it until we're done with the kill quest, but... We can go look. Here's a witch doctor up here, too. That's good. If I could stop clipping on the canoe, then I could get a peek here. Yeah, that's going to be an escort quest. Okay. So, what we need to do is we need to find one more witch doctor. Let's see if any of our buddies down here have respawned. And uh, if they have, we can take one out and then we can see about doing the escort quest out of here. Oh, 
Uh, pretty sure that was a 3,100 crit that I just saw pop up. Might have been the biggest crit we've had. I would really like to not pull more. It looks like no matter what I do, I'm gonna just pull the entire camp, so... This guy has just been walking towards us as if he's already aggroed, but he's not. I would have left some of you guys alive if uh, you weren't so aggressive. Don't you, don't you want to live? Hmm. Okay, now, escort quest. Yeah, the diaphanous wings we have not had a lot of luck with, that's true. Need to be closer. Okay, yeah, we're not gonna fit our Kodo up there. That's just not gonna happen. You must help get me out of here. I was gathering herbs nearby when a handful of these little savages abducted me. I tried to fight them off, but there were too many of them. Help me return to the Cenarian Refuge and away from these cruel wretches and their vile magic. I feel like every time I step foot into one of these buildings, the music cuts off suddenly. And then it starts back up once we come out of the building. Let's test it. No. <laughs> That's not what's happening. Oh wait, it did. It did happen. It just took a second. Yeah, now the track is restarted. Yeah, going inside these buildings, I guess the buildings are coded to not have a music track continuation. So the music just awkwardly dies. Oh, she did Moonfire. That's that's really cool. How far are we taking her? Oh, we have to take her quite a ways. Yeah, we're going to be heading back to turn this stuff in anyway. Um, yeah, she's going in on these guys. I like that she's running, that she's uh, exhibiting some kind of like desire to get the heck out of here, as someone would when they have been captured. Can we fight these and like, or she's she's just gonna keep going? Let's focus on just getting her out of here. We'll have plenty of time to fight the diaphanous um, flies some other time. Yeah, because she's actually sprinting, and I, I really appreciate her initiative. Uh, all quests that you have to escort somebody should happen just like this. The enemy, the NPC should run. Uh, that's much better than the RP walk. Uh, are we going to get attacked? Yes, we are. I'll get at least one cleave in for you guys. I know you guys prefer it when I cleave. We didn't get our victory rush credit for these guys. I wonder if they don't count as actual enemies. I'm noticing that we also can't uh, loot them. But we're getting kill experience for them, so I wonder why they wouldn't... Oh, that one triggered victory rush, but the first one didn't. Maybe we didn't get the killing blow. Maybe her moonfire ticked for the killing blow. That That's probably what it was, actually. Will she help me fight this? She absolutely will not. <laughs> I have made a terrible mistake. Oh, here we go. I thought she was just gonna leave us. There we go, I can see my fellow druids from here. Thank you, I'm sure Yseel will reward you for your actions. I am sure she will. 
Let's go back and turn all this in. I have a good feeling that we're going to hit level 63. I don't want to jinx it, but we seem pretty close. We've made a lot of progress. I feel really good about Zengermarsh so far. And yeah, if we can hit level 63, that would be awesome. We could put our last talent point into improved uh, cleave and get a lot of bonus cleave damage. Plants of Zengermarsh, there you go. Uh, let's see, the decrease in native species is certainly a cause for concern. The increase in invasive species could be related to the recent disturbances in the ecosystem. I don't have enough information to make a conclusion yet. Lorana jots down some notes on a journal as she goes through the plant parts. Take these, they might be of some use to you. Okay, she has that as a repeatable, but no other follow-ups. This is the murdery guy who wanted us to do the murdering. Uh, he seems happy, but he wants us to do more. A damp, dark place. Soon after I escaped the Umbrafen tribe, I holed up in a cave south of their village. Little did I know that the cave was being fought over by marsh beast and spore men. I had to leave in a hurry and left behind a box containing my only worldly possessions. After managing to sneak out of Umbrafen with my belongings, it was a terrible irony that I would lose them so soon after. If you're willing to bring them back to me, I'll give you one of my very own personal items. Okay, I think we're going to be going down there for- oh, you do have a different quest. Saving the Sporlocks. Achaean's been telling me stories about what happened to him down in those caves, and I think it's just awful. You know, maybe we should go do something to help out those poor Sporlocks. Achaean says they live there in the Fungor Cavern, but that the Marsh Beasts have recently invaded. Why don't you go down there and see if you can clear some of those Marsh Beasts out? Okay, cool. Uh, you have a quest now. Safeguarding the Watchers. In your travels, you might have encountered some of the expedition's Watchers. They do the majority of the fieldwork, documenting the unique inhabitants of the marsh, collecting samples, and making contact with sentient species. The safety of the Watchers is paramount. We've had to recall the Watchers we sent to explore Fungor Cavern to the south because of the marsh beast attacks. Warden Hamut believes that killing their leader, Lord Clack, will bring a swift end to the attacks. So three things uh, to do down in that cave, that's awesome. I also want to set our hearthstone here. Let's do that before I completely forget. Oh, the dying balance. That does not have a follow-up. And escape from Umbrafen. Don't think we really want anything here. We could take the one-handed mace. I need to skill up some of my other weapons. I really do, but... Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have a couple more to turn in. This is also kind of the level range where it starts to take a lot more XP to hit level. So I can't get too excited when I see that we're three or four bubbles out. Because three or four bubbles out could be like 10 or 12 quests. It's not going to be like four or five quests gets it done, you know what I mean? A couple of you guys have recommended that I, like, respect Prot, that I might enjoy leveling that way, that Devastate does quite a bit of damage, and it would help us out in dungeons as well. I might do that once we hit, like, level 65, 66, a little bit later on, when some of the five mans get a little bit more intense. Uh, I might, I might consider it then. Magasha is the fiercest troll in the marsh, but she only respects mighty hunters. I tried to prove myself to her, but the one beast that could impress her is beyond my skill. Maybe you could help me out. It's the giant bog wasp known as Blacksting that roams the area south of the glowing Draenei Towers to the west. How How is, like, hiring a guy to kill something for you gonna impress somebody who's impressed by people killing things for you? We're, we're gonna impress her, but you're gonna still be the guy who couldn't do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Doesn't really seem like that's going to work out for you, my man. But we will do it and we'll take the experience. Searching for Scout Gioba. Now that you're familiar with the terrain, I'd like to ask your help with something else. The Deadmire, we've taken to calling the area to the northwest, is an eerie place. No one has ever reported seeing anything alive there, but they didn't stay for long either. Scout Gioba volunteered to investigate the area to re and report his findings. He left the post three days ago and hasn't returned. 
It's not like him to be gone that long without sending some kind of report. I like that the trolls here just kind of talk like normal people might talk. I know that sounds really bad. I don't like the troll, like when they put the fake troll accents in there, the fake Jamaican accents for the trolls. Uh, I always have to like paraphrase, I, I work the accent out as I read, but these trolls, for some reason, they don't have accents. It's really weird. It's almost like WoW quest writers write a bunch of quests, and then like the level designers put in the NPCs, and sometimes when someone's writing a quest, they just don't know that it's a troll that's going to be giving it. So they just write it like they would write any other race's dialogue in the entire game. <laughs> Which is how it should be. I shouldn't have to deal with their concept of, like, a bad accent taken from a real-world source. That's not something that I want in my MMOs. No more mushrooms. There we go. Uh, you have a follow-up. A job undone. Someone needs to find a way to make Ravj come to his senses. He's ignoring his duty, and instead he's devoting all his energy to getting my attention. <laughs> he, he definitely is. I've tried ignoring him and telling him to stop. Nothing seems to work. Until he gets over this, I'm left cleaning up after him. He was supposed to have dealt with the spore wing, but I'll bet the monster is alive and well. If you have time, would you mind going to the western part of the Deadmire and killing the bats? Okay, cool, yeah, we can do that. I'll deal with Ravj in the meantime. Yeah, the great thing is, we barely hit it, but we did hit level 63. So that is pretty awesome. Let's go in here and we will get our third and final point in improved cleave. This is going to give us a bonus, 120% more damage on our cleave. That's really exciting. I'm happy about that. And yeah, let's take a look at our map here. We still have a ton of stuff to do. I'm going to wrap up the stuff to the south before we kind of start to branch out, before we start to go north. I do want to take care of the stuff down here. That's going to start with the diaphanous wings. We're going to investigate a Brothen Lake. We have Naga Claws to collect, and we have a bunch of stuff to do down in the Spore... The Sporling Cave down here. So yeah, I'm really excited to be in Zangermarsh. I'm having a really good time here, and I hope you guys are as well. That being said, I'm going to take a little break here for today. Let me know what you guys think, and thank you guys so much for being here and for continuing to support the series. I really do appreciate it. And a big special thank you to those of you who are members on the YouTube channel, who have clicked that join button, and those of you who support me on Patreon. It is that kind of direct support that's going to help me keep doing what I do long into the future, I hope. So thank you guys so much, those that do. Everybody take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back here again really soon. Bye now.